in my new book, for instance, in uh, Aging with Dignity, Living with Grace, I use the eight steps because four years ago, January 4, 2010, uh, a mother asked me to speak to a young boy and a young man that was 22 years old and he tried to beat me to death because in truth, his mother thought he had an alcohol or drug problem. He was very mentally ill. But I had to come back from that, from losing 80% of my memory, from having my ability to do the job I did was grossly impaired. And uh, it was through the mastermind, through prayer, that I was able to begin to heal myself along with the help of uh, some very, very insightful physicians who ironically turned me onto the prayer wheel, which mirrored uh, the eight steps. And this was a, a doctor in Toronto, a Dr. John Thornton, and he works with people with brain injuries. Before the assault, we were going up straight uphill like a rocket. We, uh, uh, the, the business I had going from the day I got assaulted continued until 2013. I had so much production. I had a series going and three other productions that were all starting up at that period. I'd only been in business three years again. I had resigned as the president of a large company in Toronto, Red Apple Entertainment. And um, it was interesting because uh, it, it was, we were, and we were winning awards. I was nominated at BAMP for the best series in the world, for best family series. Mm -hmm. So it was unbelievable. And then it was like going off a cliff. I just stopped being able to close deals. And I had to make the decision to shut my company down and to put it on hiatus. I, if you call, I still talk to you, but I laid off all my staff, my son that had been working with me for four years, Mike Wheeler who had been with me seven years, Anthony Wallace, uh, Deb, all of the people that had been around me for a number of years, I had to shut the company down because I burned through so much cash trying to keep it going that I knew I would end up using all my resources if I did that. And I had to make a decision to change the direction of my life then and there. Well, here's where I am today. Uh, last July, I started uh, uh, trying to salvage. I was bailing as fast as I could, but the brain damage that I received, it, it impacted my ability. The greatest gift I have, listen, I'm a salesman. When you are a producer, you're a salesperson. That's okay. what you do, yeah. okay? I had a three in 10 closing average, well documented. Often it was 50%. I would close 50. Oh, near, these three years when I came up to it, I was doing 50% closings. I went through 320 no's after that. I'd never gone through more than 10 in my life. Wow. So what I did is from July until August, I laid off the people and I was in desperate straits in the sense that I didn't know what to do. And I was praying and asking for guidance and one day I was meditating and a voice said, when I made the decision to, to ramp down the company instead of ramping it up, I got peaceful. And then I started writing the book, uh, Aging with Dignity, Living with Grace. I made a decision to chronicle what I was going through. Yep. And I chronicled every step and I wrote my journals and there. And in a matter of 60 days, I was sitting meditating in August and a voice in my head said, look on the internet in Vancouver. And I thought at this university that I didn't know anything about, and there was an, uh, an opportunity. I'd been praying and asking for guidance. And it said, professor, screenwriting, uh, 72 hours left to apply. And I applied and it turned out that they had me fly out the next week. And I had five days to close up a, a, a residence in Toronto, put a house in the country for sale, move furniture, and uh, if they said yes to me, and they said yes, and it was miraculous. And that, I wanted to come back to Vancouver for a decade. I love Vancouver. This is my spiritual home. Okay. I've never felt as much peace as I have felt in the last 72 hours, for instance. Yes. Because I just was confronting some parts of my personality about surrendering and forgiving myself. I had never done enough work on forgiving myself. And the fact is that this book is finished. I am doing a talk tonight. Yep. I am changing the direction of my life to being, I've said that I, in my first book, I said I, got the, I spent the first half of my life getting. I'm trying to spend the latter half of my life giving. So today I see a whole new opportunity for me to work with others to be of service. I see a whole new opportunity to keep growing because I've been in a fog, a frigging opportunity for growth for a long time.
<laughs> I'm coming out of the fog. I'm ready to enjoy some of the benefits of the hard work I've done. Okay. Good for you. <laughs>